Good morning. It's Monday. It's August the 2nd. You know, God's a giving God. It's his nature. It's just who he is to give, and he gives to us generously. He promises to take care of us and bless us beyond what we can ask or imagine. He promises blessings to his faithful children that are more than they can handle, and he keeps his promises. We have read for several days, now Joshua 21 and verse 45, that says, Not one word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed, all came to pass. So we know the Lord promised to do many good things for Israel, and he kept his promise every time. The Bible's full of promises to groups of people, to individuals, to you, to me. God keeps his promises. His word does not return empty or void. We know that Isaiah said, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55 and verse 11 is where that's found. And so, as you know, for a couple of weeks, we're putting our attention on a different uh, focus of God's promises each day. Our hope is in God. If you put your hope in God, it won't be in vain. It won't be empty. But if you put your hope in God and the saving goodness of Jesus, he'll save you. Trust him today. I want to read a few verses regarding uh, God's generosity. God's a generous God. We remember these verses. We read these verses to help us to uh, remind, to be reminded of God's love for us and his generosity toward us and that we should emulate him and be like him. So let's read a couple of verses. Mark chapter 9, verse 41 Jesus is speaking, truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Acts 20 and verse 35, in all things I've shown you that by working hard in this, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. In 1 John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. If anyone has the world's good and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us love not only in word or in talk, but let us love in deed and in truth. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, a couple of verses here out of this passage. Romans 12 and verse 10 starts out, Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. One more passage. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Again, Jesus' words here, Matthew 20 and verse 26. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Verse 29 says there, And so they went out of Jericho, and a great crowd followed him. Are you following Jesus? Are you are you hearing his words and doing what he said? Do you know he gave his life for you? Do you have Jesus? Let me read one more uh, scripture from 1 John chapter 5. This is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Because of Jesus, You can have life, you can have hope, you can have a future, you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Savior and your Lord. Trust the Lord to save you. The Lord loves you. He gave his best for you. Love him and serve him and follow him. He's promised in Scripture that we can live for him and uh, be with him forever in eternity. That, friends, is the good news. Amen. That's God's word for today. It's uh, Monday. It's August the 2nd. And uh, let's take a minute and pray together. Father, thank you for giving to us, Lord. You're, you're such a giving God. You're such a generous God, Lord, and we pray that we would follow your example and we would be a giving people, be a generous people. 
Lord, we read your word today. We read some of these verses that show the promises of God regarding your generosity. Lord, we thank you that you keep your promise, that you've taken care of us and you give to us. We're grateful for that. We thank you, Lord, that we trust you. You have uh, promised in scripture many things to us and you fulfill it every time. And we say thank you. Lord, I bless your people to receive this word and uh, to be strong in you, Lord, to walk and keep step with the spirit. As Paul said, we thank you, Lord, that you promised to take care of us and bless us beyond what we can ask or imagine. We've experienced that, Lord, and we're grateful. Lord, help us to be uh, good examples of you and your love. Bless your people today. Give strength and health and healing and wholeness. Every good thing we pray. Lord, you know what your people are facing today and this week, and we thank you for all of your help in every way. In the, in the name of your Son, amen. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you for a moment today. We'll look for you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Enjoy the sun.